Battling a raging inferno is clearly an emergency for those who put their lives on the line to fight it. But even after the flames are out, a danger lingers that is proving just as deadly. Our cover story is reported by Tony DeCopel of CBS This Morning. It's one of the world's most dangerous jobs. Firefighters put their lives on the line every day to save the lives of others. Firefighters like Mike Palumbo. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. A fire captain. A fire captain. He was drawn to service, I think. He was very passionate about giving back to the community that gave him the opportunity to have that career. During Mike's more than two decades of service, his wife Chrissy and their five kids couldn't help worry about the job's more obvious dangers. But a few years ago, far from any smoke or fire, something else caught up with Mike while hiking near the family's home in Beechwood, Ohio. I knew as soon as we got there something was wrong and I tried to convince him just to get back in the car. He was like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And we got down the ravine. He literally walked into a tree. And I just panicked. Chrissy rushed Mike to the hospital where they learned he had stage four brain cancer. What do you do when you get that kind of news? I literally crawled into bed with him and just prayed into his ear. I had my kids brought in because I didn't know if they'd ever see him again. Prior to that, was he ever sick? I mean, no, did you ever see him? No, he was injured? healthy. He was so healthy. It's just so mind boggling that you have this young, healthy, strong, Happy guy. And then, in a snap of a finger, your life is turned upside down. For Mike's family, his diagnosis was a shock. But in fact, it's part of an alarming national trend that's caught the attention of researchers like Dr. Jeffrey Burgess at the University of Arizona. The cancer risk that firefighters have is unique to being a firefighter. They have so many different types of cancers that have been shown to be elevated. He says the biggest danger to firefighters today has changed from the fires they fight to the smoke those fires produce. Since 2002, almost two out of every three firefighters who died in the line of duty died of cancer, according to the International Association of Firefighters. We have about 13 members right now who are battling various stages of cancer of active members, and we have a number of retirees in that fight. Joseph Finn is chief of the Boston Fire Department. So this is the memorial wall? All the black and whites are members who've passed away from an occupational cancer. Since 1990, Finn says cancer has killed more than 200 of his colleagues. How does that compare to the number of firefighters who die in the fire itself? It certainly outnumbers it at least 10, 20, 30 to 1. Johnny Fiscal, I went to high school with him. He's a great running back. That's a change from the past, Finn says and scientists believe it may be linked to another change in modern building materials. Everything you buy today is laced with plastic. So once they decompose and they combust, they're gonna give off all these toxins and carcinogens that are really deadly to firefighters. According to the CDC, that includes formaldehyde, asbestos, and arsenic. And adding to the risk is an age-old tradition in firefighting, a celebration of soot as a sign of good work. What did it mean to be dirty back then? There was a badge of honor. The dirtier you were, it looked like more work you'd done. You were the guy who got the thing job done. And now, as if surviving the flames and then fighting cancer weren't enough, some firefighters are facing another, even more stunning challenge from the very cities they're protecting. Hey, buddy. 37-year-old hey. Patrick Mahoney is a firefighter in Baytown, Texas, a city full of refineries and chemical plants we're taking on an inferno like this one in April is all in a day's work. In 2017, after 15 years of service in Baytown, Mahoney discovered a bulge on his neck, thyroid cancer. And we already had, at that point, one or two guys in my department that had cancer. And these were all people who were not smokers, did not use chewing tobacco, they were healthy people. When I was diagnosed, I definitely felt that it was job related. It's impossible to ever be sure what caused a particular case of cancer. But Texas is one of 38 states with so-called presumptive laws, meaning if an active duty or recently retired firefighter is diagnosed with certain types of cancer, 
it's presumed he or she got it on the job and is entitled to workers' compensation benefits like lost salary and medical coverage. But for many firefighters, those benefits are still out of reach. My city's workers' comp carrier initially flat out said, we don't cover cancer. Mahoney appealed his case and won twice. But then the city of Baytown sued him to get the decision reversed. To be sued like this after they denied it is a betrayal. It makes me sometimes just want to go work at a coffee shop because I feel like they don't care. At issue, according to Baytown, is whether Mahoney's thyroid cancer should be covered under Texas law. Baytown has been seeking judicial clarification, the city explained in a statement, adding that paying each claim could cost the city between $600,000 and $2 million. And Mahoney's case is not unusual. Since 2012 in Texas, more than 9 in 10 firefighters have had their workers' comp claims denied, according to the Texas State Association of Firefighters. I just want to let you guys know that I love you, that I am ready for this fight. And it's the same back in Ohio, where Mike Palumbo worked his entire career. Like any other person who gets sick or injured on the job, the benefits should be there to take care of their health and to replace their income. It's that simple. Somebody breaks a leg at work, it's covered. In 2017, Mike and his family had helped pass the Palumbo Act. It just means something to me on so many different levels. Tonight, a handful of Ohio firefighters, including one from Beachwood, celebrating a victory for their health. A law that presumes that firefighters will receive benefits if they get certain types of cancer on the job. Firefighters want to help, and now they'll have the help. It truly means a lot to me. Yet when Mike himself was too weak from the cancer treatments to work, his claim was denied. Mm -hmm. All right, are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, you have to wake up, though. Tell them. He was only two months shy of official retirement when he had to turn in his badge. Give him a kiss. Just clap by his head. There you go. Ten months later, at just 49 years old, he died. It's not like he died in a fire. And you can say on this day at this time. He died from all the fires. Yeah. You're telling me that because my husband died slowly from his job, that he shouldn't get the same benefits as somebody who died suddenly from their job. And that is the bottom line for me. Two years after Mike's death, half of current firefighter cancer claims in Ohio have either been denied or are caught up in appeal, including his. Chrissy Palumbo says she'll keep fighting. Fire departments around the country, meanwhile, have begun to focus on prevention. So this is one of the things Tucson has done to help reduce cancer risk. What does a washing machine have to do with cancer? So when they go to a fire, they get the cancer-causing chemicals over all their gear. In Arizona, Dr. Burgess says one of the easiest things firefighters can do to prevent cancer is wash their gear and themselves immediately after a call. In the past, they wouldn't segregate their gear. They may go sit down in their living quarters, maybe with their gear on Watch and get TV. it on the couches, et cetera, yes. These firefighters are also taught that looking dirty isn't heroic, but dangerous. Air masks have to stay on, even after the flames are out. And many departments are investing in a second set of gear, so something clean and hopefully carcinogen-free is always handy. But for those who have been on the force for years, like Boston Fire Department Chief Joseph Finn, the damage may already be done. Do you think today, standing here talking about this, you're carrying remnants of fires from the 80s? Uh, there's probably a good chance of that. And Finn wonders, if we can't protect this generation of firefighters, who will come forward in the next generation to protect all of us? Is there one of these fire trucks that would have been the kind of fire truck your dad used? It's this one right here. Your youngest son yeah. wants to be a firefighter like his dad. He does. Knowing what you know about the profession, how do you feel about that? It frightens me. He emulates his dad. He misses him greatly. Do you remember when you decided you wanted to be a firefighter? Ever since um, I went to the fire station for the first time. 
What was that like? Um, basically, better than going to Disney, I can say that. Bottom line, if you had your say as a parent, would you want Nicholas to become a firefighter? No. It's a good profession, it's a good life, but our family's suffered enough.